Can we sing one more? Yes. Can you help me? I sing praises to you, Jesus. Can I sing? Turn to your neighbor and say, that's Pastor Saul. Come on. Can you help me? Is Greg here? I saw him earlier, but... Just one more. I believe, I believe. I believe God's going to do something. Come on, flock, run over here like when the cops used to chase you. <laughs> See, every time you pick on me, you forget I have the microphone. <laughs> this is one of our uh, adult worship leader groups, Greg and, and, and his wife. The same as in the back.
Jesus with the word of God. We're glad that you're here. You're in a church that loves you, that really, really cares for you. A church that believes in you. And you say amen. Turn to somebody and say, there ain't no other church like this church. Because this is how we roll. Yeah, we will leave you here with the Holy Ghost. Would you please stand? I want to first of all welcome Pastor Ryan and Pastor Chris being here from Living Word. Sister Valerie bringing the, the ladies down here. And I want to thank Sister Louisa for bringing her husband Ed Trout to preach. He didn't want to come, but he didn't want to come, but she wanted to. He didn't want to come. Would you please help me give a great big Destiny Community Church International welcome to Prophet and my friend, the friend of this ministry, Ed Trout.
you were just one track minded. <laughs> Let me tell you how you are very scientifically gifted and mathematically gifted. You have a, you have a leaning towards the engineering side. If you were smart and, and obedient to the Spirit of God, you will go to school and learn engineering. You will do really well and keep your music going. Because it will always be a blessing in your life. Do you understand? Uh, God is very jealous about the woman He's chosen for your life. He doesn't want you to you ask God. You've got a, you and God actually have a, had a conversation about this, about the woman of your life. So you don't want to mess it up. You want to be do it right. And God heard that and took you very seriously. And He's pleased with your own commitments towards that. And He's going to give you a very, even the heart down to the blonde, God's got it all down to the finest detail. It's got it all down perfectly where you asked Him. And it's going to be just like that. But she'll be at college. She'll be at college. Not music school, but college. Got it? Her name is... <laughs> I charge more for those things. <laughs> What's your name? Marcus. How old are you, Marcus? 20. Wow, you don't look 20. You look about 14. <laughs> I have that same problem, people get me all messed up with my age. So are you married? What? What are you? You got a, does she know? Where is she? Come, girlfriend. Alright. She's holding a baby. Oh. That was scary. Your sister? Oh, because I say you couldn't be dating this. That wouldn't work for me. So you're the girlfriend, right? And what's your name? What's your name? Are you nervous? A little bit. You should be. Oh, you yeah. should be. Oh, I'm a terrible tease. I'm such a tease. So, how old are you? You're older than... You're dating an older woman? What's with that? <laughs> what do you do? A what manager? A talent manager. So, what do you do? Wow, you, you're in, in LA, but you recruit for to export them. That's not so good. We want to keep them here, right? No, yes, no. Where's your mom? Uh, she is at work. What's her name? Does she come here? Because God's reaching out to her. She's gone through a very bad valley, and she's really, really at the end of herself. And God's reaching out to her. She can't escape. Wherever she turns, God is in her face. I want you to know, God is. Your prayers are working. No, don't give up, okay? It's going to work. You're very lovely. You're a beautiful woman physically. But what makes you God's champion is your heart. You've made some very clear, very determined decisions to do what's right and not compromise. Before you met this fella, you really took a real knock with someone and their lies and deceit. And you're never going down that road again. And you made your mind up. And you made a good choice. This guy's got a good heart, good spirit. He can be a little slow sometimes and not the best communicator. <laughs> The best communicator, but he's got a good heart, very good spirit. What do you want to do with your life? I forgot your name. Marcus. Marcus, what do you want to do with your life, Marcus? Are you nervous yet? A little bit. Yeah, you should be a lot nervous. What do you want to do with your life? I want to do something that's weird. Art, what do you do? Guys, no imagination. What is wrong with you people? You want to be a mariachi? <laughs> little, very, very tight studded jeans, and that can be painful. Gift thing is you have a lot of personality, you've got a good heart, your strength is you're very consistent. You're not up and down, your strength is you stay consistent and level. You not move left or right, you continue, that's your strength. And whatever you put your hands to do, you'll succeed because you're consistent. You're very honest, very upright. You're not as forceful, you don't go after a thing, you have to be really angry. And it takes you a long time to get angry. You don't get upset easily. And so it takes you a long time to fight for what's rightfully yours. She's not like that. She'll fight in a hurry. <laughs> no problem. She'll, t she'll tell you how she feels and how you should be feeling. She'll give you all the same sentence. So I want you to know that. But you've got a lot of love in your heart. You're, you have an incredible gift to help people. You would make an excellent pastor. Excellent. Because you love people and people are comfortable with you. Kids are comfortable with you. You can just see in the, in the animal kingdom how wherever you go, whatever animals in that house, they always come to you. 
And you know why that is? Because the love of God is so strong inside of you. There's a peace and a love. They, they feel it. They sense it. And they're drawn to you because of it. God has anointed you. What God's got planned for you? Many things. But it's up to you to make good choices and follow the Lord. Okay? You'll do well. Thank you. Good Brian. Dude. This is for somebody's child. Your tall child? How did you get him to be so tall? What did you feed him? Because you're not tall. I know why you're not tall. Because your mom said to you that when you grow up, you're going to get a job. You stay short, you can avoid that one, right? It's a Russian thing. <laughs> All right, so how old are you? 16. And what do you do right now? School? And what do you want to do? Just, just school? And what do you want to do when you finish school? Music, you guys are so boring. <laughs> Let me tell you your strength. Your strength is you're born to lead. It's not possible for you just to follow. You'll always take over the crowd eventually. Wherever the group is, you'll end up being the boss. You're a little bit sloppy, you need to tidy up your life, and that room of yours is like so messy. You need to really fix it, like, really. I mean, you can, just don't want to do it. I don't know why you're waiting for someone else to do it. But you have a structure inside of you that's very really natural. You have an order. Let's see it in your room now for a change, and in the bathroom too. <laughs> Must be your mother. But you're born to lead, you're very smart, you're not using your brain, you don't like school, you need to. You need to, be a, to pay attention to school because you're very smart, you need to be all around. There's some things you struggle with and God allows that to let you forcefully push harder so it doesn't come too easy. Because the, if, when things come easy, you hopeless, you don't care about that, you lose interest. Even as a little baby, when the toy was too easy to play with, you were bored. You need something to challenge you all the time. That's who you are. And you're born to lead. You have to lead. And you're going to be a helper. You're going to be a rescuer of a lot of people in your life. You're born to, you're called to rescue and set people free. That's your destiny, right? Okay. Dude. Are you crying? What's wrong with you? You're like your mother. She's always crying. And she tells me she's happy. I don't get it. So what's your name? Matthew. How old are you? 17. So you are you, are you older than him? Yeah. Are you smarter than him? Yeah. <laughs> there is a big gap in your childhood. You went from being a child to being an adult in one day. Just, just jumped overnight. And you lost something inside of you. But at the same time, you also gained something. Sometimes the worst tragedies become the greatest blessings. Do you understand that? And the devil try to put a self-hate spirit on you, and I'm here to tell you, you were born to be a blessing. You were born to greatness. And God has, I cannot even describe in words the plans he has for your life. Do you understand? You're walking a very lonely road. A lot of what you choose, because nobody gets close, not even your brother knows your life. You're very private. And you don't want to share a whole lot, and you have wars going on inside of you because you're growing up at that stage, becoming, you're becoming strong and a man in every way. But God is your father. Yes. God is your friend. God is everything you're ever going to need, and He really does care. He, does, he is on your side. Do you understand? You've got a lot of good things on the inside of you, more than you could ever dream. And God, now they all want music, but God has graced you with the anointing for music. It's grace to you with a song. It's grace to you with music and writing. Because you have so much pain and depth inside of you that your songs will be messages. They will speak. Do you understand? That's your destiny. And I heard it say in New York, but New York is going to have, have you there for a while too. It's all part of your destiny. God's got plans. But your lonely journey, you have to change that. There are people around you that want to be your friend. You want to let them close. And you're losing out because you don't trust anybody anymore. And God will bring people that will love you. And let me tell you, you have things that you think that if they knew about me, they wouldn't like me. You're making a huge mistake. Because the people will love you all the more. There's such a depth inside of you. And you'll become an incredible songwriter. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. Do you understand? Uh, Andre Crouch had an enormous funeral. He touched the entire world. And he went through hell in his own life. And he wrote songs that touched the entire world. That's where you, you're headed for that same journey. To tell, write songs that are incredible. Are you hearing me? That's your destiny. You were born for a purpose. The angels sang when you were born. Why are you crying? What's wrong? It's your son, right? Your son too? It's your child? 
Not your child. Your nephew. Whose child is it? I, I get confused. There's so many of these people that... Nikki. Okay. It's your sister then. Child. Gets, how many children do you have? Why are you crying? You must dehydrate terribly with all the crying. Okay, so... Um, uh, you're an interesting little lady too. You never looked for trouble, it always found you so easily. And you did the most obvious things in your life. You were doing things wrong and you were regretting it while you were doing it. It's the oddest thing. You know you did it wrong, but you still did it. You were sorry while you were doing it. And God loved you every minute of the way. Do you understand? What you, even though you kind of have been, you're doing your life, you've never really accepted that God likes you. You wish you could go back and change some stuff and do it right so you were a better person, but God likes you just the way you are. The way you've been through is giving you enormous wealth to help people and to touch lives. And you're headed on the same journey. You and your mother are going to form a team of ministry of healing and deliverance to people's lives. Do you understand? You were just always a little impulsive and got ahead of yourself and said things you weren't supposed to say. But there was all this youthfulness and it's passing. You're growing up so fast. Being a mom has taught you enormous. You get, you go, you go to mom, I get you. I get it now, mom. I get it. Because you're having to be a mom yourself. But you're a good mom and there are many good things waiting for you. You have a war or a fight that you're fighting that nobody knows. Not even your mother knows the thing you're fighting now. Oh, no. no. And the Lord is on your side. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Show us the color. I'm just kidding you. Just, someone told me, or Father told me, I'm just kidding. Good job. Good spirit. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please don't get in a hurry. Let me speak to you tonight, family of God. Let me tell you honestly, we're at war. We are at war. Uh, the Lord downloaded a series, and I could never teach it. I need about these four or five sessions to teach some of what I've learned about the war room. But I'm going to touch on some of those things tonight. We are at war. Since Satan came to elude and mess with Adam and Eve, we've been at war. Now, the Hebrew Bible has only 24 major books, and they do not talk much about Satan. There's very little reference to dem demonologies and devils and very little reference to those things. We know about the sons of God and the door having relations with daughters of men and, and these disembodied figures that came from the flood are demons. We understand so many things from, from the word of God. But when Jesus came to the earth, he introduced a lot of spiritual and demonology and talk of spiritual beings consistently. In fact, the moment he began his ministry, he started out already at war in the wilderness with the devil. He started his fight already. A war began. When he died on the cross, we know that he, he, he overcame every sin and every power all the devil had. He was defeated at the cross. We understand that. But throughout the life of Jesus, in three years, he referred to so many demonic activities that you don't hear the Jews talk about at all in the Old Testament. They very rarely mention demon possession. Jesus often spoke about it. The disciples came back from having been sent out in the 70, and Peter said, even the demons give way to us. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Now, what made the devil fall like lightning? They went out to preach the gospel and set the captives free and heal the sick. It brought down all his activity, that very positive, life-giving force that Christians brought to, to the others and the message and the healing and deliverance. But there is so much activity in the, throughout the life of Jesus and the devil comes in so many facets and ways to pull you down, but his target is to get you away from Jesus. Now, last night I mentioned to you why the devil hates you so much. I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate it for those who were not here last night. You are not angels, and that's why the devil hates you. He's an angel that is made to serve God, but he has not got what you have, which is the DNA of God. You are made in God's image. God took his own DNA and reproduced himself. You are everything that God is. He made no other creation like that. 
He took that spirit and he housed it in the body. You are a spirit living in the body yes. and you have a soul. Yes. That's who you are. Yes. In this journey of the earth of 70, 80, 90 years, it is God's purpose for you to know Him, to get ready for eternity with Him, to make the choices that Lucifer and all the demons that left Him did not make. He wants you to choose to love Him and to follow and to serve Him and to know Him in your relationship. And that's the purpose of this journey. And while this is going on, the devil is doing all he can to stop that. Are you all listening to me? Yeah. I'm going to start reading today out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. If you'll read with me quickly, please. You sound already like you're bored already. You've got so quiet with me. Ephesians, chapter 6, under the E's in the New Testament. Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10. Paul writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong in yourself. And in His mighty power, let me, let's, let's be real, there's no power like God's. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand, not God's stand, not other stand, your stand against the devil's schemes. The devil has a scheme and a plan. From your day that you are created by God, He's got a plan for your life, but the devil formulates a scheme for every one of us. Everyone's scheme is different. The purpose of that scheme is to damage, to torment, to attack you. And for example, how many of you would agree that it was never God's plan for Samson to die blind under rubble the way he died? It was never God's plan. Do you agree with that? Yeah. But it was a scheme in Samson's life that brought him there. The scheme was not women, or weakness of women, as some people say, not at all. He was very in love and he got married. But she betrayed him. The scheme in his life was betrayal. He had no confidence when she asked him, tell me the secret to, your, to this uh, riddle of yours. He said, I cannot tell you. I didn't even tell my parents. I don't trust you yet. I haven't learned to trust you. And she betrayed him. Then she betrayed him again with her best friend when he came to to officiate the marriage a little later, six weeks later, he left, he was mad at her, he came to consummate, and she was already with, the, with her, his best friend. So she, he was doubly angry, and then he went down a road of constant betrayal. That's why when Delilah came, she, she asked me, tell me the secret, why are you so strong? And he said, I'm tied time with a new string and I was weak. Three times! You'd think he'd get a clue every time when he wakes up and the things that he told her, there she is, he's tied up with the same things that he told her about. And you'd think he'd get a clue. But in his soul, he was so trying to overcome the scheme that somebody, somebody is going to help me and not betray me. Now, schemes work in our lives. Women will often marry a man that's abusive and alcoholic because dad's that way. Yeah. And they want to fix what's wrong in their own family. Or they'll divorce one abusive man and marry another one because they're trying to fix the first one. It's a scheme going on in their lives. Everyone's scheme is different. My scheme is rejection. My mother didn't want me. My wife's scheme is fear of failure. Her, she has no problem when people leave or go when I at our church. When people left, she said, bye. Didn't bother her. It always bothered me. But she has a problem with uh, actually things not being perfect. She's never said in 40 years of marriage to me, sorry, I'm wrong. It's my mistake. She cannot say she's wrong. I cannot want to start a fight. I must tell her she's wrong. So I have to say it in a different way to her. Otherwise, I cause war in my home because it's a scheme. She's so perfectionist. There's nothing she doesn't do with absolute perfection. Whether she sews and she can sew, whether she cooks or cleans, everything has to be absolutely perfect. It's the scheme in her life. There are every, every one of my children, I could name you the schemes that are the devil functions. When he comes to attack you, he attacks you to a scheme, whatever your scheme is. And he sets it in motion from a young age. That's where all those things happen. Your child just sets those schemes in motion so he can get a hold on you. They can always stop you from being productive and effective for the things of God. Are you listening to me? So many of you have been to jail and made mistakes and had abusive situations and all kinds of bad stuff because of the schemes that were going on in your life and around you. Always function. The devil's out to get you. He functions subtly. He even uses Christians to try and bring you down. Jesus says, listen to me, listen to me now. Jesus said to Peter, 
He was trying to evaluate his ministry. Who do men say that I am? He said, some say that you, that you are the Messiah. Some say you're a prophet. Okay, well, who do you say I am? You guys are close, you should know. Peter says, you're the Son of God. It was amazing for him to say that because Jews had for 4,000 years prayed, blessed be the Lord our God who is one God, now suddenly had a son. That's why Jesus got excited. He said, blessed are you, Peter. Be a special blood didn't reveal that to you. He was excited. But listen, not minutes later, not minutes later, he rebukes him and says, Get behind me, Satan. The same one that he just praised and lifted up. Why? Because the devil will use every uh, purpose, every, every mouth he can to try and put you down. He will use so subtly. No, this won't happen to you. The son of man will live in the hand. No, this won't happen to you. Get behind me. You don't have the purpose of God in heart. And he could recognize how the devil was trying to trick him. And they'll say the nicest things to you sometimes. And get you away and make you feel like it's okay. Make you think it's okay and use scripture. The devil will use scripture. He'll use people to give you scripture to yeah. do the things that are yeah. compromised. Yeah. That you know in your heart, it's not right. Yeah. It's not right. It's not right. You have a Holy Ghost compass on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It was never God's plan to split hairs with scripture. In fact, Jesus never said to his disciples... Take notes. While I'm teaching, take notes, guys. Get the facts straight. Write this down. Never. You know what he did say? Go and wait in Jerusalem. Right. Until the Holy Ghost has come. Because he is going to lead you to all truth. Amen. So you've got a Holy Ghost compass on the inside of you. And no matter how people try to twist you, if you really listen to the Holy Ghost, you won't make those mistakes. But you had war. The devil's out to stop you and get you to stop you serving God. You had war night and day. Jesus said to Peter, the devil has asked God, how do you know that? Because I was talking to the Father, and the devil came in and said, let me sift Peter. He was accusing Peter. Why? Because Peter was weak. He knows where you're weak. He knows what you've messed up. And he will let you not forget what you've done wrong. You just try to prophesy or do something supernatural or do something for God or witness, and he'll remind you, yeah, so... You know what you've been doing. <laughs> you know what you were looking on on the, on the internet last night. <coughs> he'll tell you, he'll put such guilt and shame on you to try and stop you functioning because he's the accuser of the brethren. Jesus said, The devil's ass has served you, but I prayed. What did you pray, Jesus? I prayed that your faith would not fail. Because when the devil comes against you, in your scheme, when he comes against you, whatever he's done to you, what he's after, really after, is your faith. What must I do to you that you'll stop serving God? What must I do to you to make you think there is no God? What must I do to you to make you think that God has forgotten about you? I must be able to get you to a place that you can forsake, turn away, and think that God is not real. And he's always hammering you there. But I pray for you, Peter, that your faith would not fail. And when you turn back, because he knew he was going to go through a valley because of the devil is out to war against him. And let me tell you, it's real. The war is seriously real. There's constant fighting in the spirit dimension. Now, Jesus <laughs> had a kingdom conferred on him. I want you to understand this. And he said to his disciples, which is us, the same kingdom given to me I give to you. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I give you, not some, but all authority. Now, the difficulty is that you may have an, an, an incantation that you want to fight the devil with, a, a verbal thing. And if you read with me in Acts chapter 19, you will read about the sons of Sceva. And what happened was they saw the supernatural happening and the demons being chased out. So they said, in the name of Jesus, who Peter preaches, come out of him. And the demons said, Peter we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? So even using the name of Jesus didn't work. It's not a magic wand. The incantation didn't work. It was whether they really had faith or not. Because if you rebuke the devil... He knows if you really believe what you're saying. That's right. Listen That's to me, right. he's, he's hating. The That's devil right. is breathing right the second while I'm teaching you this because he's so afraid to get this. Yeah. That when you resist, Jesus said of you, 
Scripture says if you will submit to God and resist the devil, he'll flee. Now, if you understand that you have full authority over him and really believe it, you'll be able to resist him and you'll be able to rebuke him and he has to obey. He has to. Not because you could. Wait, you must listen. You must get this. The moment you try to do this, he will flood you in your ignorance of the scripture and your relationship with the Lord, which is not always mature enough. He'll flood you with every accusation and everything against you to make you feel like that you don't have the right, you don't have the power, and he will, he will wear you down. But if you understand that you're righteous because of what Jesus did, nothing that you earn, if you understand that the authority you speak by is not your own and that he has to obey you simply because Jesus said so and you really believe that he'll run away like a scalded dog. Do you understand? Now, most of you have rebuked the devil and you're more in fear when there's a ghost-like sound in the house or you feel like someone's going to attack you or something or some. The purpose of the devil is to create fear. Jesus said, fear not. One of the greatest attacks of the devil is to create fear. Fear is the mirror image of faith. You don't need an abundance of... Am I going too fast for you? No. You don't need an abundance of faith. It is a fallacy. Even the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. We need more faith. No, no, he said, no. You need faith as little as a mustard seed. That little bit of seed. But, but, you need not to doubt. Because he knew. One doubt. And the devil, that's how he came. The first time he speaks, introduced in the Bible, you know what he says to Eve? Did God, did God really, is that what he says? Not really say you can't eat of the tree. In fact, just so one doubt in your faith, just one doubt, no matter how much faith you have, I'm going to floor your faith. And so faith comes by hearing, and the mirror image of doubt and fear comes also by hearing. If you watch CNN, you will have such depression and such, you lose all hope of life. But if you fill yourself with the word, Constantly, 12 spies saw exactly the same challenge, the same problem. 10 of them had no hope. And two of them who had a different spirit said, we can take it. We can take this place because they had a diff- you have a different spirit. You wouldn't even be here if you didn't have a different spirit. So what are you going to do? You messed up. You've been to prison, you've done things you shouldn't have done, you're ashamed, you're embarrassed. Are you going to stay there and the devil beat you down? Are you going to constantly walk with shame and every time the devil wants to, you want to do something, the devil comes up and he reminds you what you did. Are you going to live at that place all your life or are you going to get up and stamp the devil under your feet? If you are not that person, that mistake and that messed upness is not who you are. Do you hear what I'm saying? The devil wants to make you think that because he pounds you. That's that part of his plans to push you down, push you down, to keep you from functioning and being effective. He's so afraid, he's nervous that you might grab this, that you have power over him. That you don't have to yell, you don't have to do incantations, just say, in the name of Jesus, I tell you, stop. And if you really believe it, he will stop. Because he knows, he says, Peter I know, and Jesus I know, but Apparently, I know you too. You'll know who you are. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The war is on. We have war. Let no one take it lightly. The devil's out to get you morning, noon, and night. Jesus was very aware of all the effects and the purposes of the devil. He saw how he was constantly... We don't want to be over demon conscious, devil conscious all the time. But Jesus said, you've got to be wise as a serpent of all the animals in the kingdom of animal world. How can the world can a snake be the smartest one? Be as wise as a snake, really, God? That's the best. Because the devil is the snake. And you've got to meek as a devil. You've got to know the devil and his tricks. He's always up to some trick. And the Holy Ghost will illuminate and he will enlighten you. You'll see the enemy at work. When Peter said, no, Lord, so that get behind me, say, he saw the functioning of the the craftiness, the slyness of trying to get through. And the devil will do all he can to bring you into a place of temptation. You know, <laughs> there, is no, there is no overcoming sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6 says, run like hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says there. Flee sexual. It doesn't say overcome. 
When Joseph ran and left his garment behind with part of his wife, that little petite Egyptian lady didn't rip his clothes off. He was losing it. That's why he ran. He didn't run because he couldn't help himself. It's because he was overcome. And he knew if he stayed there, trouble was going to happen. Are you, look, are you, look, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. King David, he didn't fall into sexual immorality overnight. It didn't just happen, oh gosh, what did I do last night? No, he was in his palace. He looked at this girl bathing. And God knows why she's bathing outside. I want to ask her one day. She's having a bath outside. Naked. He's looking. And then he says, okay, come here. Who, who's the inquirers? Why are you inquiring? Aren't your 300 wives and concubines enough? Yeah. 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 Who's that girl? Uh, <laughs> her name is Bathsheba. She's married to Uriah. Well, just to the car, I want to come, want to come visit me. Why? Why? She's married. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you trust me? I know when to stop. You're right. How'd that go? You thought you could overcome. You're not going to do anything. Come on now. That's why you run from those. You run from sexual immorality. You run. You don't play with it. You don't overcome it. You run. Right? Yeah. There's patterns God's given us in His Word. You've got awful quiet and you don't like what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You avoid every situation that's going to bring about a situation like that. And let me tell you, sex outside of marriage is sin. Yeah. In yeah. any shape and form. Yeah. Sex outside of marriage, any shape and form, is sin. Are you listening to me? It was never God's design for us to do that. Never, ever, ever. Are you hearing me? So whatever you're doing, stop it now. Today. If you can get a, a hold, give no place to devil, get a foothold in so your life somehow. And I tell you, pornography has become an epidemic, apparently. It's an epidemic, it's like a disease, a fire. It used to be when you used to have to go to the places to see pornography. Now, apparently, you get it on your phone, you can get it anywhere, or anytime, anyhow, and it's always available to you. And that stuff, like every sin, will suck you in, take you from level to level to level until it's devoured you. Yes. Do you understand? If you struggle with that, then don't keep it to yourself. Have the power of the devil is keeping it in the dark. Amen. If you confess your sin, if you confess your sin, it's already in the light. It's already losing its power and shame. If you confess what you struggle, you got very. I could feel the tension in the room. I mean, because you have no power of the devil if you keep going down those roads. If you keep doing those things, he's got a hold on you. It's got a hold on you then. Are you listening to me? Yes. We've got to change some behavior. We've got to change some behavior and we can. Don't tell me how. Yes, you can. Don't tell me I can. Yes, you can. Please. Don't tell me that. You can do it. If you really want to do it, you know, it's willpower. You will, God will power. Yeah. Woo! But you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision to stop and to serve the Lord because we are at war. And for us to be effective at war with the devil and have power over him, we've got to make sure he's got no place, no room, he's got no way of getting in and having any control over us. Are you, are you hearing me? Now, that's the one thing. One of the major ways of giving the devil control of your life is unforgiveness. It is, a, it is a cancer in the spirit. Jesus said, if you don't forgive from the heart, God will give you over to the tormentor. God himself will remove your forgiveness and give it oh, you over to the devil. So the devil has a heyday when you don't forgive. So when he attacks you, one of the subtle attacks he does is to keep you in a place of unforgiveness. Even if you've forgiven someone, he'll remind you and say, what happened to you? I heard you went through a terrible thing as a child. You were abused. Yeah, I did, but I forgave. Well, who, who did it? And, you, and when you rehearse it, all you're doing is bringing it up. Because when God's forgiven, He puts in the sea of forgetfulness. And you, if you've really forgiven someone, you don't ever discuss it, not even with your spouse. You never, ever bring it up. My oldest daughter has this conviction. When her children mess up and she punishes them, she doesn't say, well, you keep doing it because you forgave him 
yesterday for doing it. So she can't say, you keep doing it, I'm punishing you again because you did it yesterday. Because yesterday when I punished you, you asked forgiveness, I forgave you, it's done, I can't use it. And we often in our own marriages tell our husband and wife, oh yeah, what about you? What did you say when in 1942? Remember that, thir that Thursday night, what you said? We've forgiven each other, but we keep a good record in case we need the ammo. And all you're doing is enforcing and empowering the devil in the warfare you're in. You've got to recognize we're at war. When you're at war, you make some serious changes. When we fight in Iraq, we don't play games. The fatigue has changed color because it matches the war, war place we are, the, the dust. And the strategies are different. You can't fight in Vietnam the same way you fight in Iraq. That's right. We change the patterns. We change the, the tools. The, the weapons of your warfare are mighty. There's different weapons. Well, you, can, you cannot kill a terrorist with a fly swatter. <laughs> you can't kill a fly with a machine gun. You have to find the right weapon for the right battle. Are you listening to me? And if you're not in tune, if you don't take this war that you in seriously, if you don't recognize, he set you up in your childhood with all the abuses and all the broken marriages and all the stuff at school that happened to you. Everything was a setup. Yeah. Even the schemes that he set in motion was to set up to make you less powerful and to stop you at the war. And not one of you in this room are not empowered by God. To overcome and to smash the devil. Yeah. And I'm calling the army of God yeah. to stand up yeah. and fight. religious and weird and freaky, but I believe in cleaning up a house. I believe in sanctifying a space. I believe in taking authority over a home and putting in any kind of demons and coming against every spirit of strife, every spirit of, of sexual abuse or impurities. I take authority it can't exist and coexist in the space I'm in. I can see it in my grandchildren's lives when some of my children are not serving God. When you know, they come into my door and they're irate, they tense. And after hours, they start getting so full of peace and joy and happiness. They don't want to leave us. And I'm speaking the truth. They don't want to leave us because I let the Spirit of God work and I begin to pray. Because I know what I'm fighting. Not flesh and blood, but powers and principality. And I have authority over you, devil. You're not taking my grandchildren. You're not touching them. I'm showing you how it's done. I speak the word over my grandchildren. I speak it. I speak constantly how wonderful they are. I speak life because it's power. Jesus said to the tree, die tree in the dead. He said, just speak to the mountain. Well, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. They call me stupid, call me weird, but I'm speaking. And I'm going to keep speaking. There was not going to try it. We have authority. We can shut down. We can shut down businesses that are from the devil. We can shut down things just by merely praying and speaking of We have authority. Do you hear what I'm saying? Telling the truth. What comes to my mind now is with a church in San Francisco called the Voice of Pentecost. And they took me down a street called California Street. In California Street is the Hotel California. You know that song? It's about the satanic church. Uh, Andre from the whatever his name is was there was a house and they took me to the house and it's the, all the house the property is so priceless from this vein what the, the vein and there's just a space there's another the house is gone because the Christians would come and they just stand across the street and pray and pray and pray and then and then the whole thing with the sexual molestation happened with him he went to prison and he died but killed and that that house was demolished demolished for 20 years it was just an empty space until now recently it's been the land's been redeemed because christians took authority over that property over that space you have authority god gave us authority over this planet the devil does not he's been lying to you for years he's been tormenting you with shame and guilt and feeling of failure he's holding you down time to get up and know who you are in jesus time to know who the fuck bring the fuck here devil i'm ready There's power in the blood. That power, Jesus' blood overcame the devil. And I'm here to tell you this is a new day in this church, in this community, in 
this, this area. We're not staying. Yes, we may have fallen down. We're not staying there. We're not going wow. back there. We are getting up and moving on. The righteous man falls seven times, but gets up. We're getting up. We're that crowd. We're getting up crowd. We're not staying down. About how many times you've fallen, don't want to hear it. Well, it's not my first time. I don't care. Get up. Get up. Go to the last. Don't want to hear it anymore. Because, because God. Because God. Well, you understand. Of course I do. You think I'm any less human than you are? We also have fights going on, and the world's getting more wicked by the day. But the brightness of the shining of His people is increasing every day. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Pastor, you are a champion pastor. I watched you tonight again. What an amazing pastor you have in this house. What an amazing pastor. Thank you. Thank you for sensing it the Holy Ghost. I'm singing that song. It was the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Thank you for being a man of God, a man of the Spirit. I appreciate that. I really do. You're a, you're a, you're a sensitive man of the Spirit, and I appreciate that. I heard you pastors too. Yes? Do you talk? Yes. Okay. What, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan. Dude. Are you married? No. Ryan's Hope. Yeah. Do you have a girlfriend? No. Would you like one? Maybe. Uh, maybe. That doesn't have, there's no faith in maybe for me. <laughs> I, I don't, you're not in a hurry. You better get married. Lord's coming back soon. Yes. You're not getting any younger. The top clock is ticking. Come on, brother. Work with me. Nervous, embarrassed? What? No, I just uh, want to go higher. You want to go higher? Well, the wife will say, you know, the Bible says that man has found a wife. Has found a, not that man has found a good wife. Man has found a wife. Has found a good thing. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because you don't get the wife you want, you get the wife you need. Because it supplies all your needs. God knows what you need. So don't whine about your husband or wife. You got what you need. My wife, I married 40 years when I was married to her, just six, seven months. I was so disappointed. She wasn't at all what I thought she'd be. It's true. And I told her, I said to her, I said to her that she wasn't, I told her, you're not what I hoped you'd be. That I, I'm disappointed. You know what she said? Well, if you were a better man, you would have got a better woman. Together, girl. But I learned, that, I learned from that that for me, for her to be a better wife, I had to be a better husband. So instead of changing her, I got to change me. You understand? And I've learned so much from her, from the Lord through her, because that's what wives do. She's still teaching me to drive, of course. <laughs> Stretch of my faith and fa patience. She told me today, we're a team, we're a team. No, no, we're not a team. We work together. I'm together. You, you're together and I'm working with something, I don't know, something like that. A workshop marriage. I work at shoe shops, I don't know, something like that. So, back to you. What do you do? You pastor the church? What do you do? I work for Pastor Ruben Brandon. You're an unusual man. I see you. I see you right in the front edge of the battle, dealing with the most darkest, darkest spirits. And uh, you have an incredible, powerful gift of mercy, but also firmness. You know, you've got no fear. You, you have challenged. I mean, you, a lot of guys have lost their lives. Where you just tell them right in their face, you're not backing down. And uh, it's just amazing how that God has always watched over you because your intent is always for the kingdom of God. Right. Your angel's been tired and nervous a few times, but he's stood with you all the way through. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Your family don't always get you, and you're an enigma to them, and they don't understand the whole thing, and then they do, and then they don't, and they do, and they don't. But you really are a, a, a soldier of Christ, there's no question. Amen. And when you get a burden for someone, it's a blessing because you are, you are tenacious like a bulldog. You will not give up. No matter how rotten, how bad, you'll even go fight at the, down the, at the courthouse for them. And that's what you do. God thanks you for that spirit. You just don't give up. What is your name? Chris. 
Chris. Wow. Chris what? Chris Appleton. Appleton. Wow, so much more famous. <laughs> what do you do? I'm a youth pastor. pastor. <clears throat> Same place as you are? Yeah. The youth pastor. How tall are you? Six five. Wow. The doctor told me for my weight I should be six three or six four. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then I would have been normal. So I realized that I'm not fat, I'm just short. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're an interesting man. You have a lot of depth. A lot of depth. The devil has targeted you to put thoughts in your mind and offenses against people that have, haven't always treated you right, even in the ministry, where stuff hasn't been right. And, and you had to let go of things. And it's been a hard journey for you. You could have done so much better not being in the ministry financially. You could have done so many other things. But you kept going. And it's been hard for you because the devil tried to, try to get you out. They tried everything to work you out of the ministry. Your greatest challenge is your, is your head. Your thinking process. If you will lean on the spirit and not on, on the natural thoughts, you become far more effective. You seek God's fruitfulness. You have a great ability to teach. And that's what hasn't broken loose yet. You're a youth minister, but really you're born to teach the word. Yes. You have revelation that you have not been able to unleash on the church yet, but the day is coming. The day is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah! What's it to you? Hallelujah! What's it to you? I'm so glad to see Gabriel, my friend. I've always loved you, Gabriel, since I can remember. Gabriel, the, the, Gabriel's an angel of a man. There are different kinds of angels in heaven, you know. Yeah. Michael's a fighter, an archangel. He fights. He does war. But Gabriel's a, man, it's a messenger. He brings, brings messages, words. And the, Gabriel's a messenger. And I'm going to tell you, I'll bring you a message tonight, Gabriel. That God has to, had to take you down to take you up. And it's not over. The best is yet to come in your life. But for your sake, for your sake, God had to empty you of everything so that he could fill you up ten times more than you ever thought you had. But it has to be his way. There's going to be no compromise. God will not allow you. And you know there were things that you cut corners with. And he's never going to allow that again. But for some reason you don't get it. How much God favors you. How much he loves you. People don't know this church. But right now I don't know much about you. What's going on. But I just know that I see in my spirit how broken you are. How hurting you are. You're very hurting and, you, and you're just keeping your head above water right now. You're just surviving. You've never thought you'd be fighting your life in this place. You never thought this would ever happen to you, that you'd be this way, that you've got nobody. You feel completely alone. You know your mom loves you, you know that, but still you feel completely alone. And I'm here to tell you it's not true. It's a lie from the enemy's lying to you. You are more loved and more wanted by so many people. You are surrounded by love. And God is going to lift you up. You are going to, if you ever, ever had money, God's going to bless you a hundred times more. Yeah. But you'll be a righteous man in every way. And no one can touch it. Can't touch that thing. Can't touch that thing. Can't touch it. Because God's going to lift you up. You understand? I see a yard with big high fences, almost 20 foot fences, with trucks and earth moving equipment. I tell you, you're going to go into an industry you never thought possible. You're going to, you're going to buy equipment, fix it up and use it and, and rent it out. And you're going to make enormous amounts of money with earth moving and, and trucks and all kinds of stuff. God's got such plans for you. You're very crafty. And God gave the craftiness to you. You're smart. And God's going to use that. Do you understand? And God's going to fix your whole life step by step. As sure as I don't agree. <laughs> Always be my favorite, Gabriel. I like Gabriel. Messenger, I'm a messenger too. I don't always feel like I like my messages, but I try and do my best. Right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name with the folded arms back there, sir? Looking around now. Second row. Second row. Yes. My name's Alfonso. What's his name? Alfonso. Alfonso. <coughs> Alfonso. And what do you do, sir? Uh, I'm in the men's home. You're in the men's home? Yeah. Let, me te let me tell you. You are not that guy that the things you went through. It's so far away from who you really are. Do you understand? The devil set you up. If you look back in your life, you'll see how cleverly 
one thing after the other led to the next, led to the next. It is so far from your character to have done the things you did. So far from who you are. But the devil set you up. And now it's time for you to get even. The enemy. The way you're going to get even is you're going to rise up and let God fix you. Now you must make a covenant with God. That as long as you live on this earth, you're never going to lie. Ever. Ever. You're going to be truthful to everybody, even if it causes trouble, and to yourself. Because you had to find your way through the forest. You had to do things that were so out of your character. But you're never going to do that again. You're a very smart man. You're very ordered in your thought life. You've got a certain pattern. And I'm telling you, no matter who's counsel or psychologically trying to evaluate you, there is nothing wrong with you. Wow. Nothing. decisions you made and you had a lot of rejection and stuff happened in your childhood that was really horrible I mean it, stuff happened to you so bad such abuse that you don't even remember half of it your brain could not process half that stuff the hatred and anger that you felt was because you couldn't deal with the pain but I'm here to tell you from God what the enemy did to you God's going to use for his glory do you understand God's going to use it sitting here in the church, I don't know if they make them or why you're here, but in your heart of hearts, you're here, but yeah, you're not going to suck it all in. You don't know if you can believe that stuff. I've seen too much and, and that cynical thing. And today, you're going to lose that cynical Hallelujah. thing. You'll let God make you all that your grandmother prayed. You're going to become all that grandma prayed for you to become your destiny. She called, she cried tears before the throne just for you. And she fasted just for you. And God will cause the plan of God to come up out in you because you were born for it. And you, in fact, you should have been dead. And God rescued you from death because of the destiny of your life. And wow. you will bring life and blessing to others. Now, some of your family has been taken away from you. You've been separated. You have no idea where they are. But God, but God, it's going to give you a miracle. It's going to bring every one of them back in your life and reconcile and heal. It's not too, not too difficult. You may never go back to the game. You may never, ever get in the phone with them again. You don't belong there. You are not a turkey. You're an eagle. And you better get it and get it straight today. What's your name of the little jacket on the thing in the pockets here? Lizette. What's your name? Lizette. 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 Okay, and who are you with Lizette? I'm here by myself. You're here by yourself? <laughs> yeah. That's so sad. What do you do, Lizette? Uh, I work two jobs. You work two jobs. Do you know what they are? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to tell me? <laughs> Sorry? I work in a service three to eight. And, and I work at a restaurant where I see as well. Oh, do you have children? You're with child? Are you married? It's been a journey for you, hasn't it? You've got the sweetest heart. You know, the strangest thing about you is you're so smart, but so gullible. You've made so many mistakes in your life because you always believe everybody. And the Lord says, I must tell you not ever to feel bad about that again because the Bible says to the pure in heart, all things are pure. It's because your heart's pure that you don't expect people to lie and cheat. And you just so forth, and you just been looking for someone to love you since you were a little girl because you just never could please that one person in your family. They just never could say anything positive. You just needed, and you found looking for that love in all those places. But I'm here to lose you from that today. That you are loved by the Lord. Yeah. Honestly, really loved. I love it when he interrupts me, whispering in my ear, and to tell you <laughs> that God doesn't look on the outside, he looks on the inside, and he loves your heart. You've made mistakes, all you see is your mistakes, but he sees your heart, and he loves your heart. 
It's as if you did nothing wrong before the Lord because your heart wants to do what's right. And God's going to help you. Do you understand? So I'm loosening you from that naivety and that gullibility. No one's going to use you and lie to you anymore. Do you understand? You're not going to buy that stuff because you keep giving money when you shouldn't. You keep doing it. Stop. Say no. It's not hard. It's less letters than yes. Just two. No. Okay? You are in the predicament financially because you keep helping other people. Stop. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right. What's your name with the glasses and the folded arms and the chain around your neck and the... Uh, yeah, dude. Reuben. That sounds familiar. I heard Reuben last night somewhere. Reuben, are you in this church? Yeah. You come here? For... Well, I'm glad you came tonight. <laughs> hey, you look nervous now. Are you nervous, Ruben? You don't need to be. How old are you? 18. And what do you do for a living? Now, School? And what do you want to do when you finish? Go to okay, here's the deal. You're a good guy, and the devil's been bidding for your soul for some time now, trying to get you messed up, and you know what's right. You know the way, walk in it. It's that simple. You were never born to go down that road and make those mistakes. You were born to do what's right. You're frustrated because things don't pan out. And it seems like whenever hard you try to do what's right, things keep coming back and bite you. Don't let the devil lie to you. Because righteousness will prevail. It just takes time. Just keep at it. Do you understand? You've got a righteous heart. You want to do what's right. And there's stuff lingering in your life now. The devil's sending people into your life to distract you. You need to shake it off now. Because you don't belong there. You don't belong there. Do you understand? You're going to go to college. It's part of God's plan for you. You're going to do really well. God's going to even fund you. He's going to cause people to help you financially in your college. So you need to do that. Right? And I need you to come to every church service you humanly can. I'm going to ask if you do or not, because if you don't, I'm going to come find where you live. <laughs> and then you need to be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> ask my daughters. You don't want to get in that wrong side of me. I am not the nice person when it comes to fighting. And I want you to come to church. You belong here, okay? You got it, Ruben? I'm looking to it, but you're born, you're born to do great things. You're very smart. Yes? All right. Hallelujah. Looking for sinners. Looking for sinners. Yes. All redeemed sinners, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. What is that guy's name? He doesn't wear a collar shirt again. What's your name? The drummer? Andrew. Andrew. Andrew, pick someone close to you there. Pick someone for me. Someone you don't like. <laughs> that man, you don't like him? I don't like him, I love him. Oh, what a smooth So, what's your name, sir, with the white shirt? Scott. Great, Scott. <laughs> and you're sitting next to Scott, too. There's a lot of Scots going on, right? So what do you do for living, Mr. Scott? A wastewater treatment plant. A wastewater? Don't let me go down that road. <laughs> Make sure when they flush the toilet, it doesn't get in the ocean. Thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> you have enriched my life. A lot of crap you guys me, but okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Scott, are you in this church? Uh, no. Interesting enough, you've got a good heart. You don't look for trouble, it finds you. All the, there's always something going on in your life. Your life's pretty intense. You're a very intense person. You've got a very kind heart. You're like a, you're like a roaring, uh, uh, what's the bear that makes a lot of noise with a little thing in his hand, his paw. But you really are far bigger bark than bite. And God loves your heart. He loves your, you don't want to do it, you moan about doing stuff, you do it anyway. God loves your kind, giving spirit. Your life's been messed up. I mean, you, the devil has taken everything from you. You've lost so much along the way. Looking back, you look where you are. I've got nothing. Look where I am. But the Lord is going to do great things for you. All he wants you to do is surrender to him. You walk with God with shame on him. You. Like you don't think you're good enough. You're not a good Christian. You just, in fact, you've had enough of Christians anyway. But you, just, you have this whole thing that you just don't want to be. But the truth is, in your heart, you know God's real. In your heart. You know it's wonderful to serve the Lord and people all need God. 
and God is touching your life. He wants me to tell you that He saved your life. He stopped what happens in your family. Repeated people taking out a season, dying when they shouldn't. God stopped that with you because He's extended your years, not shortened them. He's extended your years for a purpose. There are really some damaged relationships along the way in your life and you try to fix them, but it really gets all messed up. And you, It's a funny thing with communicating with you. You've got a good heart, but it gets all messed up with the conversations. And God's teaching you how just to be yourself. Because you've got so much love on the inside. Trying to fix it, trying to justify it doesn't work. Just be yourself. And people will love you just the way you are. Because you've got, you've got so much goodness on the inside. It must come out. That's God's plan. There's a financial breakthrough before the end of the summer that God has planned for you. A real, a real breakthrough. A genuine breakthrough financially. A most amazing. You will have to admit it's a miracle. It's a new day for you, Scott. It's a new day. God loves you. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. You want to pick someone? I know you do. It'll take too long. All right. You can see. How about you, lady? Next to you. Who's that lady? Patsy. Patsy. Patsy Klein. <laughs> Patsy Klein, the singer. Miss Patsy. So, are you in this church, Miss Patsy? You don't come to this church? I don't blame you. It's too, too wild. They just chase the Holy... They just chase the devil and follow the Holy Ghost. And what a crazy church this is, right? <laughs> Patsy, where are you from? Uh, You're from Whittier. You don't come to this church? Patsy, this is a wonderful new day in your life. You've been to hell and back. But I'm going to tell you that God has put His hand on your life. You've walked a long journey with the Lord. You know the ways of God. You know. You know God's ways. You do. And you've had to do so many, you've lost so many things along the road, suffered so much loss. So much stuff. And I'm so sorry for that. But the Lord is your comforter. As I'm talking to you, I see His arms around you, holding you. You're having a hard time grieving. You're having a hard time shaking off some of the sorrow in your life. But He wants to comfort you and heal you and fill your life with a new song. This is a new chapter of your life and a new day. And it's almost like you're ready to end this one and just get out of here and leave this earth. And God says, no, Patsy, actually, I need you here. You've got too much to give from my kingdom. So I need you to shake that thing off, Patsy, because I, I, you're not any worth it to me, like anything like that here or there. So I want you to shake it off and I want you to finish this race with excellence. Because I've brought you this far and you've come through so many things. And the Lord is great in your life. I see you don't sleep well, you're restless and you keep waking up. And so from tonight is a sign to you, a new peace coming on you to sleep, a deep, deep sleep. And the peace of God will be your portion. The one that you prayed for in your own family has been almost unbearable. The Lord sent an angel tonight, dispatched tonight, an angel also, just to show you once again, God in, God in motion for your own behalf. He's not forgotten about you, Betsy, and He's renewing everything in your life. Renewing everything. This is a brand new chapter. Amen. Hallelujah. What's, yeah, what, what's your name of the red hair? I think it's red hair. Yes, ma'am. Grace. 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 That's it. Thanks for the reporting. I must get the name on the reporting. Are you married, Miss Grace? What's his name? Kent. Kent and Grace. Is Kent not here tonight? Okay, what do you do, Grace? I work for the court. For the court? Yes. Grace, the Lord says He's not forgotten about you. You built a neat little wall around yourself, that's the way you survive. People don't break your heart, they harden it. You had to harden it to survive. And I, I'm so sorry. I, you didn't deserve. You did not deserve the way life has treated you. You just didn't. But I'm here to tell you that God's going to lift you right above it all, and the joy that He fills you with is incomparable to any human blessing of any kind. And he's going to do such great things for you. In your own family there's been discord. And in your own family there's been those that are not united with you. And, and God's going to turn even your worst enemies in your own family to become your friends. And the peace with you. God's going to do it by His Spirit. And she's rubbing your, rubbing your back. There's an anointing down your back. I see. No, that's fine. There's an anointing going to fixing something in your back that was damaged years ago that needs healing. 
as a sign to that he's your helper. And those headaches are going to leave as a result of that God's healing in your life. God is doing a new thing and giving you a new husband. Not another one, just a new one. God is turning him upside down, writes it up and rearranging so many things. A little stubborn man. And God will do some great things for him and put some new joy and happiness and bring back the funny side of him that seems to have lost along the, along the journey. God bless you, Miss Grace. Behind Miss Grace is... Behind, what's your name behind Grace? Freddie. Freddie. And you are his? And your name is? Alex. 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 Alex and Freddie. And you have children? Yes. How many? Do you have, are you pregnant now? Okay, so I see another baby coming really soon. I need to tell you about that. that it's gonna, it is more God than you realize. This baby is a gift from heaven. And you better thank the Lord because he's going to bless that child. Talk about music. Oh, my goodness. Your child, that child inside of you has got the gift of music already. Do you understand? God's going to bless you. As for you, sir, God has opened up a new job situation for you. It's been a really, it has been a hell on earth. Just however hard you try, you're up against every time up against the wall. And you just can't get beyond. And you're like, they make it hard for you. It's like this jealous spirit always around you. But the Lord. In fact, it's going to be such a change that your income will Double. Because greater is he that's with you than he that's in the world. Do you understand? God is for you. You've sown, you guys have sown some serious seeds. You gave your last. No one knows in this building that you gave your last. You had no money for food, but you put it in the offering. But the Lord. The Lord saw that. And he will, he's no man's debtor. He's no man's debtor. He will pay it back and you will be astounded in the next couple of years what God's going to do. You look back and go, it's not possible. How did this happen to us? The Lord. The Lord. Okay? So be excited about the baby. Yeah. Kim, where's Kim's mom? Kim's mom. Kim's mom. Who's Kim and who's Kim's mom? Kim is Marcus's girlfriend. Marcus's girlfriend? The pretty lady? Okay. Okay. But she was not here. She's here. Okay. Kim's mom. Stand up, Kim's mom. What's your name, Kim's mom? I really prophesied over you. You know that? She was telling you? The Lord is fighting a fight for you. Some fights you have to get in and fight, but some fights you've got to stand still and let God fight for you. It's time for you to give up and let God take full control and fight for you because God's fighting for you. Do you understand? It has been one hellish journey for you and the Lord is going to give you the victory. And you're going to see His power this year as God intervenes for you on every front, every level. God's not forgotten about you. God's broken every every curse, every fear of cancer, every lie from the devil, even if it happens in the family, it will not touch you. And every level, God has got plans for you. And your family, your finance, in every level, God will be your helper. And I see a brand new job situation, a new career opening up to you that no man can stop. That God will give you what's rightfully yours because the Lord is able. He's on your side. It's a new day. And He's put a hedge around your family. The devil's not going to triumph. He's not going to have victory in that household. That's God's promise to you. All right. Now, I've got my hand past you. It's been fun, it's been real. It's been real fun. If I didn't give you a word, it means I must come back another time. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's let it. Let's let it. Our prophet know how much we appreciate him. There we this is the time to really consider what God has spoken to us. And whether you're a member of this church or not, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you're believing, you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believe God has given us a strong word, but I believe it was a good word. And, and, and you know, let me just say this real quick. If God spared you, has never spiritually spanked you, you need to check out your relationship with him. Because every father 
Every smart parent smacks their kids when they need them. I know it's not a popular subject, but I'm old school. Amen? Amen. One more time, let's let them know how much we appreciate it. I love this scripture. The Apostle Paul is talking to his son, Timothy, who's out starting church. He's come up against some stuff. I mean, you know that stuff happens in church. Not this church, but those other churches. And he says, Timothy, my son, is that's a spiritual son. Prior to these, he's speaking of some things that God has spoken to him. He admits, he says, I, of all the sinners, I'm the worst. Then he says this, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you. Amen. I said, God is faithful. Amen. And look at what he tells his spiritual son. In keeping with the prophecies, what's made about you, so that by recalling them, don't forget what God has spoken to you. Don't forget what God has spoken to you anyway. Amen. Prophets, like or the child, Pastor Ryan, whoever, whoever has spoken over your life, your pastors. And the reason you must not forget is because of this. Read on. So that by recalling them, let's read the rest of that together. One, two, three. You may find say God said. When the devil comes and says, you know, you're not going to make it, that's a lie. I got a word from the Lord, and you fight with that word, and you'll fight the battle well. That means you win. I said, that means you win. Can you say it again? Even if all you heard today was the word that God gave you was worth it coming. You'll never be the same. If you believe that that's the word of the Lord, you will never be the same. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I have never met in over 30 years of full-time ministry, I have never met a prophet as accurate as that right. And I just met Pastor Ryan. Over 30 years, close to 30 years, he's been coming here, sometimes two, three times a year. Sometimes he comes just to harass me. <laughs> he said to me this morning, he said, you know, I, I, I worry about you. And I said, why? And he said, I don't know, I'll think about something. <laughs> Just to harass me. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I love this man. We love this man. Yeah. I've said it before and I've said it again. He's not only my friend, but he's a friend to this church. Amen. And so we need to take care of this man. We need to take care. We need to give unto him as he's poured out today and he's given to us today. This is not dying and dash to come and eat steak and leave without paying. Not, not, not that you have to pay for the gospel. I, I, please don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying you, 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 you got to give. You got to give. Now I always hear people say, you know, that's not fair. Well, let me talk about being fair. If we want to be fair tonight, we must give in the manner in which we believe we've been given to. And I don't know about you, man, but I've been blessed tonight. I said, I've been blessed. Can you say amen? And so I want us to really think about writing that check for $1,000. You spell it T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. -E. I have faith. I believe God. Now, I don't know if God will move on you that way. If he does, you obey. Maybe, maybe 150s, whatever. Just obey and give. Give. That's the important thing. To give. Learn to be a giver. Amen. 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 And as we continue to support him and be a blessing to him, he continues to come with a fresh word, with a new word. A strong word of correction and exhortation, uplifting, whatever, whatever we need, you'll keep coming to do. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, man, that pastor is awesome.
talking about me. Talking about me. Okay? Is everybody all right? Yeah. And listen, whatever you do, it is my right as the pastor of this church to bless you and to pronounce the blessing over you. Don't leave tonight until I pronounce the blessing over you. I believe God has given me a gift there and an authority that I operate there in blessing households. Don't leave without receiving the blessing. It'll only take one more minute. Don't be in such a hurry. You'll cheat yourself. Are we ready to give? Are we ready to give? Grab your neighbor by the shoulder. Go ahead and shake him and say, are you ready to give? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank and I praise you again for this opportunity to prove ourselves faithful to you. That means to prove to you that we are full of faith, the God kind of faith. You are faithful, thus we as your children are also faithful. And so we thank you for this opportunity and we do not take it lightly. We know you're watching. We know that you're acknowledging what's going on. And so Father, let this time of giving unto the man of God that's come that you have sent to bless us, let it also bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you abundantly.